All right, today we're going to start our unit on Greece, and we're going to begin with the geography of Greece, and then we will be moving into some of the early societies, the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. So um, what you need to do with this video is you're going to need to take notes. There, You have a map that you're going to need to fill in, and you will need to stop the video as needed to take your notes because I'm not going to put a lot of writing on this one. Um, I'm going to talk, and you're going to have to write it down. So... First thing first, we're going to look at a larger map of Europe and get a little bit of a better feel for Greece. So here's Google Earth with the map of Europe here. And you can see down on the bottom here, we have Greece. Okay, there, and we'll just blow that up so we can see it. If you can look at it, you can see that Greece is a peninsula, which means it's surrounded on three sides by water. You have the Aegean Sea on the right. And you have the Mediterranean and Adriatic Seas on the left. Um, it's also got a whole bunch of smaller peninsulas sticking out of it, which means uh, Greece has a lot of natural harbors. So it is very good for the sea trade and for making money off the ocean. Now, if we look at another map, okay, back on our earlier presentation, so we'll do that. We'll get there. And we'll look at our map, okay? You can see that Greece is covered with mountains, okay? Um, and they're not big mountains. You know, they're kind of like the Adirondacks. It's nothing huge. I think the tallest mountain in all of Greece is less than 10,000 feet high. Um, but it makes it very difficult to get around. And especially in olden days, you know, 2,000, 2,500 years ago when everybody moved around on foot, it was very difficult to get around. And this caused... Um, affected Greece's development because it's so difficult to get from place to place um, except for by boat a lot of the places developed independently of each other and you had what grew up to what came to be called city-states and you can see that you have over here you got Athens by itself Sparta which you've probably heard of by itself some of the others maybe that you haven't heard of um, farther around the peninsula um, Doris and Delphi, whole lot of locations that we will go over on our next map. Okay, um, the ancient world, Greece was a group of sailors. Okay, um, it grew up the whole ancient society, the ancient world that at least we know, the ancient world of Europe, but also Africa and and Asia grew up around the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, and this meant that. People went to sea if they wanted to expand, and the Greeks were no exception. They were great sailors. They sailed about the Mediterranean. They set up colonies and outposts where they could. They established new towns on the, the coast of Turkey, so along here where you see these cities, and they went as far as Italy. And there's our sister city, Syracuse, down there on the tip of Sic the island of Sic Sicily. Okay, um, And they also moved out, if we look at the larger map, into North Africa and even to the coast of France. Okay, so you can see where there's all sorts of Greek settlements. One of the most famous of the early settlements of this part of the world was Carthage. Um, Rome isn't even on the map yet, um, and they're going to be coming soon. Um, but the Greeks were the dominant power, in, the, especially in the eastern Mediterranean, but also um, through a lot of the Mediterranean. All the light brown is the Greeks. Okay, now, um, Greece is covered with mountains, and that makes it tough to get around. But due to limited natural resources, um, the Greeks had to trade with everybody. And this leads to cultural diffusion, the spread of culture and ideas throughout the area. Uh, mainland Greece, the cities of Athens and Sparta and Corinth and a whole lot of others thrived. And they thrived because the sea was there and you could get all the fresh bounty of the sea, but also they had trade. So let's get a handle on where stuff is by filling in a map. Okay, and you have this map. Um, we'll go through and fill in the different parts. So I'm going to start kind of on the bottom left and work my way around. The big sea here, the dominant body of water in the Mediterranean, or in this part of the world, is the Mediterranean Sea. Um, one of the major peninsulas that sticks off of Greece is the Peloponnesian Peninsula, which you can see with um, the arrow there. Um, down several cities, okay, Sparta, um, probably the second most famous city of ancient Greece. 
You have Mycenae, which is um, the first gr uh, great society of uh, mainland Greece. Corinth, which guides the uh, or guards what's known as the Isthmus, Isthmus of Corinth, which is right here. Okay, it what connects the Peloponnesian Peninsula to um, the rest of uh, Greece. Athens, the first city of Greece. We'll talk in great deal of detail about Athens. Um, then we have Delphi, um, which was known for its oracles, which is uh, people that supposedly could see the future. A um, couple of major battles that are fought um, in Greece um, during the Persian Wars. You have Marathon, um, which is where the story of the Marathon comes from. Uh, the, the story goes that supposedly um, a runner was sent after the great Athenian victory over the Persians at Marathon to Athens, um, and he ran and brought the, the message and supposedly died upon arriving, but it's roughly 26 miles from Marathon to Athens, so that was the, the genesis or the beginning of that idea. Um, for those of you who have seen the movie 300, uh, the next X is the Battle of Thermopylae, or Thermopylae. Um, that is where the, the battle in 300 takes place between the Persians and the 300 Spartans and their allies. Um, the, the fabled home of the Greek gods, Mount Olympus, up there by the Triangle. Okay, um, Far to the north, or to the north at least, is Macedonia. It's kind of a sister country to the Greeks. This is the birthplace of Alexander the Great, who we will be getting to um, in a week or two. Okay, Body of water on the eastern side of Greece, with all the islands in there, is what's known as the Aegean Sea. Um, up here... On the very top is the Greek outpost of Byzantium, which will eventually grow into Constantinople under the Romans, um, and then the Byzantine Empire, and will, it is now known as Istanbul. It is one of the great cities of world history. Um, farther south, on the bottom of the Dardanelles, that's the straits that come out of the sea here. These are the Dardanelles, the Sea of Marmara, the Bosphorus, into the Black Sea. Okay, Troy of the Trojan War fame. Okay, this area over here, what is modern day Turkey, is that's where the Persian Empire, you've, those of you who've seen 300, that's where the Persians come from. Their territory goes all the way back into um, modern day Iran and farther east than that. Um, you have the island of Rhodes um, right there. And then you have Crete, the island of Crete, which we are going to, that's our first destination once we're done with the map and its great castle city of Canossus. Um, so, make sure you've got this written down. Stop the tape if you need to, and or stop the video if you need to, and um, make sure you've got the map filled in correctly. I will be checking it in class. Okay, moving on to the Minoan civilization. Okay, Minoan Crete. Okay, this is really the first major civilization in Europe. Okay, um, it begins on the island of Crete, which you should know from your map is down a little bit south of Greece in the Mediterranean. They are Greek in culture. It was first discovered at this archaeological dig right here, okay, back in 1898. Um, it was discovered, uh, the Palace of Canossus, and um, we've learned over the last 120 years or so that this was the first... Um, Civilization of ancient Greece, it's the oldest, or of, of, of ancient Greece, of really of Europe, um, it was the oldest civilization of the time. It's named after the legendary King Minos, whose picture is in the right-hand corner. Um, and they had an economy based on trade throughout the Mediterranean. Obviously, they're an island state, um, and they can't produce everything. They trade in wine and grain and olive oil that they ship out um, to get amber, ivory, and precious metals and other goods to Greece, or to Crete, sorry. Now, their towns are built around large palaces, and this is an example of the Palace at Canossus, which we will be looking into some detail in class and how it demonstrates um, a little bit about the culture. It was the largest palace. It was the King's Palace, and is built around a central courtyard used for religious ceremonies and had 1,300 rooms. Now, supposedly, underneath this, pass, uh, this castle lives... Um, a creature called the Minotaur, who's kind of a shaky uh, little racy story of how he came into being. He is supposedly a half man, half uh, bull, 
and I won't go into details of how that happened, but as you can see, it's kind of a yeah, kind of story. Okay, the Minotaur, le legendary monster, half man, half bull, and it supposedly lived under a maze under the castle at Canossus called the Labyrinth. Okay, and this is kind of just an example of it. And basically, um, what the legend, how the legend ran, is that the the Minotaur was um, the illegitimate son of the king, and um, to protect his daughter, he um, would use the Minotaur to protect her, okay? And if you wanted to win the hand of his daughter, you had to um, fight the, and defeat the Minotaur, find it in the labyrinth, and if you could make your way out of the labyrinth, which is basically an elaborate maze, um, then you could um, get the hand of the king's daughter. Okay, so that's the Mycenaeans and the Greeks. The Minoans last till about 1450 when they are overthrown by the Mycenaeans, um, possibly due to destructive earthquakes on Crete, on Crete that allow for the Mycenaeans who are in mainland Greece on the Peloponnesian Peninsula to take over. Okay, and the Mycenaeans are the people who are talked about in the Trojan War. Okay. From about 1600 to about 1100 BC, the Mycenaeans dominate mainland Greece. They're sea traders. Okay. They travel as far as Sicily, Italy, Egypt, and Mesopotamia. So all over the eastern Mediterranean. And they're also farmers and warriors. As you see, they have a, a great deal of country to cover there. Okay. And through cultural diffusion, they absorb writing from the Minoans and other traits from their other trading partners. Okay. One of their most famous... Um, Relics, I guess, of them is what's known as the Lion's Gate. Okay, um, each of the Mycenaeans lived in um, separate city-states. Each city-state contains a well-fortified uh, fortress uh, built on a hilltop or acropolis. Mycenae was the largest, and it contained the Lion's Gate, and this is the entrance to their palace. And this is a really amazing piece of architectural and engineering because this is what is known as a Corbel Arch, and I believe it's spelled C-O-R-B-E-L. It might be with a K, but I think it's that way. Okay, the Corbel Arch is this area here, okay, where they would build the arch, and they would build the stones kind of gradually up to it and build something into it to make a very sturdy door. This type of architecture actually shows up independently in a lot of different places. Um, you'll, we'll see it again when we go to and look at the Mayan culture. Um, I've been to some of the Mayan ruins, and you can see these growing there. Finally, on the Mycenaeans. These are the people of the Trojan War. It's a, the, the battle was between the Mycenaeans and the Trojans. It took place around 1250 B.C. Homer, in the Odyssey, doesn't write it down until really the late 7th or, or late 7th, early 8th century. Um, during the war, the Greeks enter the city on the Trojan horse, and they defeat the Trojans um, and open the gate for the, other, uh, for the other people to defeat them. Okay? The Iliad and the Odyssey are based on the Trojan War. Homer lived roughly um, you know, 500 years after this, so it was passed down through oral tradition until he eventually records it. The Mycenaeans win the Trojan War, but they begin to fade from power around 1100 B.C., Greece slips into a bit of a dark age and um, doesn't really come back to anything for till really after the time of Homer, around seven, eight hundred, or seven, even into the six hundreds BCE. Okay, um, so for tomorrow, you need to have your Greece map filled out and your notes out to be checked. We will be doing some work on the computer, doing some in, uh, looking into the Mycenaeans a little bit more and the Minoans. Um, but you will need to have these when you arrive at class.